Hello and welcome to Talking Technophobia. Nine out of ten doctors recommend me as Professor Movies. Tonight we will be talking about 1984, uh, released in 1984. Um, and here are some of our topics that we'll be talking about. I will talk to you a little bit about control, which I think is something that's pretty obvious. Dina, you got to mute this. I can't listen to myself the whole time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, we'll be talking about control. Um, who is Big Brother today? We'll take a look at the technology in the film, parallels we see in our lives, and perhaps predictions of where technology will take us. We'll talk about the idea of surveillance in an age of constant surveillance. Uh, we'll talk about propaganda, the death of language, and then finally about dystopia in general. Uh, we were talking before the class began about how a lot of us had to read this book in high school. And I made the comment that I feel like all I read in high school was dystopia. There are teachers who ask me, uh, oh, can you recommend a utopia book? And I, I can never think of one. Because I feel like every utopia is like secretly a dystopia. Someone was like, the Hunger Games. I was like, yeah, OK, that's an ideal society. Uh, and with everything, we're trying to grasp at the ideas of what is this film saying about our own culture, about the films we watch, and about us as people. Um, I am a big George Orwell fan. Um, I teach Animal Farm in 1984 uh, in the classroom. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, something scary and valuable in his words. Uh, this is a, like a thing I made for Instagram five years ago. It's a George Orwell quote while we were reading 1984 in class. Those are scantrons. You guys still use scantrons in school or no? Yeah? OK. Um, and uh, I'm a fan of Orwell so much so that he has definitely played a fundamental role in my own work. Uh, I've like alluded to a like, comic I've written. So like, that's from my comic. I mean, that's from my comic, too. But it's very much about like, screens and surveillance and technology and what it's doing to us. Uh, I start a new job on Monday. I'm teaching at Stepanak High School in White Plains. If anyone wants to come by and visit, just tell them you know me. Ask for Professor Movies. <laughs> Send you right up. Um, OK, 1984, things you probably know. The, uh, the screenplay was adapted by Michael Radford. It was directed by him. It's based on George Orwell's novel, which was released in 49. Uh, this film was released in 1984. There, we had talked before how there were a couple versions that came out before it, a BBC teleplay and a film that was released in the 50s. John Hurt stars in this film. Ironically, John Hurt goes on to play a Big Brother character in which film? Anyone know? Extra points. The answer the, there's no point. is V for Vendetta. He plays the big brother. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, there are no rules and the points don't matter, right? That's how we play this game. Um, it had a, a decent budget for the time. It uh, was not a blockbuster film in our modern sense, but went on to gross some kind of profit. Uh, a lot of people, speaking of profits, think that this film, the book it's based on, are prophetic in some way, right? Speaking to the future. Classify it as dystopian science fiction. Um, and it really does a lot to talk about like, the role technology and government and surveillance can play on the lives of an individual in society. And with that said, I would like uh, to show you what I think will help encapsulate the point that I'm going to suggest to you about this film. So let's take a look at what happens in interrogation. So 2 plus 2 equals 5 is a popular quote that comes from this, same like Big Brother is watching you. Um, this film, uh, and I show you that scene because I think the film really does a lot to show you how technology can be used to control people. Right, all the way down to the idea of thought control. In the film, there is the concept of thought police. So as technology is supposed to make our lives easier, right, it's supposed to be a tool to aid, right, um, that can be perverted 
all right, if left unchecked, and be used to control and manipulate. Um, and the most sinister part of all of this, to me, today, is that we are Big Brother. In this movie, the way Big Brother has power has a lot to do with the idea that it is the ordinary man and women of the world, right, following the propaganda that is farmed out to them via technology, spying on each other, judging each other, condemning and reporting each other. And it is not the government that has the power over Winston, right? It's all the people around him, his neighbors. So instead of the idea of like love thy neighbor in Big Brother, and I would argue in our world today, there is this growing tension around the idea of fear thy neighbor. So that's uh, what I'd like you to consider as we talk through some things today. Uh, let's take a look at two minutes of hate and think about if this reminds us of anything. All right. Twitter. Maybe. Just in a different form. <laughs> so this is the opening of the movie. I'd like to talk about technology, uh, and we can talk about anything you want. You can talk about technology and making the movie, behind the scenes, what you're seeing there, what you're seeing in the film, within the film. I just ask that we save talking about surveillance for our next slide, OK? Um, in this movie, right, uh, I show you that scene because I'm really interested in scenes in movies that show us the audience, right? And in a lot of ways, it becomes a reflection of ourselves. Um, and watching that scene, right, uh, being in a movie theater, right, is how I feel. I stop, I turn, I look at the other people around me, and everyone's looking at that screen. Some people, right, are yelling at the screen. And if you've never experienced someone yelling at the screen, <laughs> New Rochelle movie theater, have a long time. Um, that's a plug for you guys, sponsor us. Uh, <laughs> um, so I like, I, look, I don't like it, it scares What's up, me. Eagle? But uh, I find it interesting for that reason, because of when I talk about propaganda with my students, because that's what we're seeing, they tell me that propaganda is a, a thing that happened in World War I and II, and we're too smart for that now, right? We, we don't get fooled by that, we know the tricks. And yet, I would argue that it's never been more alive in our lives. Um, so let's think about technology in this film uh, and how it's used to control people or what this movie is saying about our relationship with technology or what it's warning us about our relationship with technology could lead. So what do you guys think about technology in the movie? Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, it's largely... I mean, it, it barely qualifies as science fiction. Yeah, you know how come? What I mean, and because the the technology itself is really grounded, and it's all pretty much stuff that exists <coughs> in our world or has existed at some point. Okay. And it's more so about how it's used than mm -hmm. what it actually is. Okay. Um. So in that way, it's more of like a not even to say a dark mirror, but a darker mirror. Okay. Um. Because it's, I mean, a lot of this stuff has pretty much happened. Like, if you even in the the movie that they're showing, that's all mm -hmm. pretty much like historical yeah. footage. Right. You know it's, I mean? uh, it's just, World War II footage. Yeah. So it's it's not really any anything that we haven't seen before. It's just amped mm -hmm. and distilled down to something. Yeah. That's really potent. I like that. The idea of montage. You guys know what montages are, right? Where it's like. Music's playing and you guys are fixing up the house or like if Stephen King's <laughs> it, they're cleaning up the blood to a nice 80s montage in that movie. Uh, but all movies are montages, right? All movies are images strung together, right? Set to sound and music and other things. Um, and because of that, right, be aware of the deceptive nature of media, right, of film. Because it, it is not... The, straight, the chain of events that you're seeing. What you're seeing is someone editing things together. Even the, the footage from World War II right, is, is reused in this movie to represent something else. And right, you catch it and where it comes from. How's it going? 
But uh, an untrained eye or someone who's just absorbing what they see, right, is just seeing, you know, battle footage, right, and doesn't think about what it, where that footage is from or who those people are. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of technology that is existing in our world today. All right, George Orwell, when he wrote this, he didn't own a television. He saw all these people getting TVs in their homes, going to the movies, right, and it was freaking him out. Uh, and I would say that we've gone much farther than the technology that this movie is showing. Right? It's not just a screen in your house. It's a screen, multiple screens in every room of every building that you go to. Yankee Stadium. I go to the bathroom. Front of the urinal. Television screen. <laughs> Take a plane. Television screen. In the bathroom, in the Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Word. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't miss a moment. They got it figured out. Um, they're everywhere. So yeah, Jeff, that was a really great point. Uh, any other thoughts about technology? Please yeah, come in, join. We have a. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we have a comment from Facebook. We'll go to it in a moment. But yeah, go ahead, check. Well, it's speaking of how it's similar to technologies we already have, the, the technology they're using is almost, it's very coarse, it's almost quaint, how they've had to work really hard to have this one giant big, big bad that can capture um, everybody's greatest fear to use as a means of populate, or like manipulating the population. Mm -hmm. Whereas nowadays you can target every individual demographic's specific big bad without having to force them into a two minute hate where they have to physically bring themselves out. Okay. It just, it's a very coarse application of the same kind of control. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, the idea that, um, sorry, the idea that, uh, the, what's his name in the movie? The, the villain? Uh, Does anybody Goldstein? remember? O'Brien. O'Brien. Is it O'Brien? It's O'Brien. O'Brien. So the O'Brien character. O'Brien's the torturer. Right? Um, is he real? We don't know. Yeah. Right? Like, but it's something that, like you're saying, like generates so much like energy towards it negatively. <coughs> um, and I mean, I'd be interested, can you think of any examples or can anybody think of examples of that like figurehead that's propped up against a group for people to rally against? Coney twenty twelve? Coney twenty twelve. Oh yes, that was it was nuts. entirely a social media stunt. It that's was an right. advertising agency. Yeah. And then that guy got arrested, like he had a breakdown on like Hollywood Bo Boulevard. He was yeah. naked and they arrested him. <laughs> It's a strange story. Uh, Coney 2012, he was, uh, according to the video, he was uh, leading an army of child soldiers in Africa. And it was trying to get people to like raise awareness and do something about it. And that's what happened. It turned out to all just be like a stunt. Well, so it was like, a lot of it was grounded in reality. A lot of it was, it was tragic situations. Yeah. But the actual popularization of that one aspect was a like, marketing company, oh. is my understanding. OK. All right. Uh, one of the comments from Facebook was in regards to like how freaky it would be if, while you were watching the news, right, that the news was watching you back. It's happening. And it's happening. You think so? I mean, if you look at smart TVs uh -huh. and even that laptop right in front of you, like I have electric tape. We call on this my laptop camera. Skype. Because <laughs> um, you never know. It's possible. Yeah. So why would it not? be true. I just think with just how technology is advanced and is still advancing and <coughs> how we're getting more comfortable uh -huh. with it. You know, fine, um, this was written, you know, like you said, Orwell didn't have a television when he wrote this. He was just observing, yeah. you know, what was happening around him. It's, it's the same thing right now, like how I said it was, you know, Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's just a different format. Sure. But I mean, you can say that's cable news. <laughs> OK. That's, you know, an example of this. How most um, um, cable, as, how, oh, okay. <laughs> how most cable news technology is conspiring against us, it knows we're on to them. Yeah. Uh, most cable news is very, uh, is very partisan. Yes. Um, and it's really like your local news that's bipartisan. And like it's the people in your community that like they know what's going on and what you care about. Um, and no one runs for mayor anymore because major news networks don't cover it. And local news is struggling to stay alive. Um, and 
CN CNN and Fox News won't cover a mayoral race unless a cat is running for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a scary thing. People aren't running for mayor because it doesn't matter. You can't beat the cat. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the badger can. Wait, one second. Yeah. OK, Google, order, order pizza. <laughs> Somebody watching somewhere. Or Siri, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Alexa, Alexa blah, 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 play blah, blah. Like, some mood music. Off those I mean, this tables. is, and that's ultimately <laughs> what this is about, right? Yeah. This is like the, this is the pre-algorithm movie. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I mean, because that's ultimately where all this leads. It's where, like, yeah, it's all, of your, all of your stuff is collecting all of your data, whether your phone is listening through the microphone, yeah. oh, whether it's all of your all of your searches on Amazon. Uh -huh. Sounds like surveillance, but I'll let you keep yeah. going. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's no, it's, so, like whether we don't call it the S word, let's call yeah. it, um, um, you know, aggregated. Okay. Right? <laughs> Fine. They're just taking they're just taking all your little crumbs, all your mm -hmm. little digital crumbs that you leave behind. And they're using it against you, like that meme where it's like, I'm thinking of something, at Amazon ad for that same thing yeah. I'm thinking of. Oh, snap, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. um, That's a really I mean? good point. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys remember AI? No, not AI. We didn't watch AI. What did we watch with robots? Ex Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Thank you. No one knew about V for Vendetta. I had to keep yeah. giving it. Oh, that's a good one. Um, <coughs> remember in Ex Machina, he movie. says, uh, Nathan's character, he, he hacked everybody's phones and computers, all their cameras, to look at their faces. Um, and none of the like phone carriers and manufacturers could do anything, because that would involve them admitting that they were already doing it, is the point he makes in that movie. Right? Like, and that's how she learned artificial intelligence. Go ahead. Um, what I found interesting with this was the way they were doctoring you know, like the articles, the news articles. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I found it kind of funny that, you know, probably more so back then, it's like it was important because people would look into stuff, they would research things, they would read, and now it's just like we have tons of things, just memes and posts online mm -hmm. that are not even from past articles or anything, it's just something people share in the now. Yeah. And there's not any kind of like will to search into it, see if this is real, see what, what the actual stats are in this. Sure, thing. right, nobody's just doing like, an investigation. Like, it just seems like this whole, like, organization and these groups of, like, cubicles of people doing this, it's, like, not even necessary. You just make the news up that you want and just share mm -hmm. it, and somewhere it'll stick. Okay, yes, please. Look at Wikipedia. I yeah. Mean, people go in there and write and rewrite <laughs> whatever they want. So you can True. use that as a source for anything. Mm hmm yeah, uh, you cannot write your own Wikipedia, but you can have a friend write a Wikipedia on you. You also have to pass the notability requirements uh, and objectivism. I think Wikipedia has gotten better with vetting some of those sources, but you're right. Yes. Yeah, that, I remember that's how what we would always discourage students against using it for that reason, right? Anyone I can't believe edit people it. Did that. Um, I saw another hand. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and then we'll, and then I'm gonna switch to surveillance. I mean, it's, it's funny to think. I mean, the whole idea of um, authenticity when it comes to reporting. Yeah. Um, when you think about like partisanism in media, right? So mm -hmm. like we say that cable media is more partisan now than ever before. But okay. I wonder if back in a time where there was no technology, where it was actually harder to verify. Yeah. Couldn't you also be partisan as hell with your print? I mean, if yeah. you, like if, if if the idea that reporters are the ones that are doing this, doesn't that just create a situation where you have fewer, like you have this elite group of gatekeepers? Like they did call themselves the fourth estate. Like mm -hmm. that's its own sort of arrogance. Right. When you think about that. As a journalist. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry. There's a level of it that goes with so, it. We're separate. Yeah. So, I mean, I could see how... Uh, you know him, Winston. Who, yeah, Winston, okay. You know, who 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 didn't have a um, a TV who 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 could who was putting this together could have some suspicion even then about the quote unquote traditional yeah. forms of media because they did have to sell copies too. Mm -hmm. Everybody had to make money. Yeah, so was, uh, oh, no one's innocent in that. Fun fact about George Orwell, this is probably him in his own mind doing penance, right? Because uh, he was a World War I right. propagandist for yeah, the British generally. government. Yeah. Uh, don't worry and carry on. It may have been created by George Orwell. Right? Keep calm and carry Keep on, calm. right? 
which is still around in our, in our popular media today, right? It's been memefied, it's been applied to tons of different ideas. You know, but Kane, um, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a sci-fi movie, but it's shed sort of a light on that. The idea yeah. that, yeah, you know, we are in business, mm -hmm. and we do have costs that we have to reach. Yeah, we know, the people know that there's a war going on. We're going to let them know. But we also have to kind of sell more copies than the yeah. other guy. And so I would say the newsroom... Uh, as much as like Alan Sorkin has his own agenda and stuff, right? The newsroom uh, really goes into this with journalism, right? He makes an apology for like what they did post 9/11. Um, it goes into the idea that like we don't want to be popular; we want to just tell you the truth. And it, but uh, I don't know about if you guys know how the BBC works, right? The BBC is 100% uh, basically funded uh, by a tax that every British citizen pays. It's like a media tax. And because of that, there, there is no outside advertising on the BBC. Right? They don't have to sell themselves or be popular or you know, get something clickable. Um, and that is something that may or may not be lacking from our own reporting of the news or our own ideas around truth. Because truth is a, a difficult concept. And we'll talk about that in, in two slides. But for the sake of time, let's talk about surveillance, because I feel like that is like the biggest thing in this movie, right? And there's a lot. So I'm going to show you a series of short scenes that I edited together. Uh, and just think about who's watching, what are they watching, what are we watching? Uh, and we're done. All right, let's try again. <coughs> OK. Uh, according to my mom on Facebook, her OK Google ordered pizza. <laughs> I knew it would work for someone. Um, all right, so uh, technology's movie is invasive. It is dehumanizing. It invades every public and private moment of Winston and the other characters' lives. Um, the film also. I mean, I, I had mentioned this, right, because it's just one movement away from that. Um, but the film also, like, culminates in this, like, almost, like, absurd moment when the camera breaks through the wall, right? The, they're repeating everything they're saying, right? Oh, it looks like the, the end for us. That's right, it's the end. Oh, they have the place around it. We have the place around it. Guess we should say goodbye. You probably should say goodbye. Uh, the, the glass breaking and the ladder coming in, it almost becomes like comical, right? And I heard s someone in our group like, like chuckle a little bit or scoff at one of those moments. And it reminds me of Terry Gilliam's Brazil. And if you haven't seen Brazil, totally watch it. It's like this, but weirder. Um, but that invasion of technology, the invasion of the screen into a place they feel safe, right? A place they are vulnerable, right? They are unprotected. Really goes re a lot into saying just how far technology has come into our own lives. So uh, what parallels can we see? Um, and what's so scary about being watched, right? Because we know from Snowden and the other guy, what's the other guy? <laughs> Well, we know from some people that governments may be collecting and surveilling information. I lived in Manhattan for five years, and there were, you can't walk five minutes down there without being photographed, videotaped hundreds, thousands, millions of times. All right, there's cameras everywhere. Isn't the UK have like the highest number of CCTV yeah. cameras? Yeah, I believe on so. The planet? Planet, yeah. like, yeah, they have CCTV literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. But because of that, their police don't, their regular patrol police, right, out on the street don't carry guns. So, I mean, it's, it can, the argument can be made either way. I'm interested in what you guys think about surveillance and being um, watched. I was in an airport in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and they had um, a hologram you know, standing there talking. Mm -hmm. And as you walk by, it turns towards you and it keeps talking to you. 
it was the weirdest thing. And then you go around the co corner, and there was another similar thing. And all I could think of was Minority Report. I was just thinking that too. I was like, oh, my no that reminds me of Minority oh, Report. That'd be a good movie like, to watch for this. I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, Minority Report. If for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, the the cameras or whatever, like scan you as you're coming by, know who you are, know what you're looking at on Amazon, and like show you commercials for that. So it's like the ads you get on the side of your browser, but out in the world, in real life, directed at you. It's scary. I'm going to get in trouble in the airport one day. <laughs> it feels ridiculous. It's because I remember a time before all of the security. You don't like holding your hands up in that exact no. same way to go through the scanner? No. I made the comment, I was like, what is this Nazi Germany? And the person with me went, you shut up right now. <laughs> I went, OK, you're right. We're going to get searched. Uh, but it's, I mean, you could, TSA, you could make an argument about their level of surveillance and how invasive oh, yes. that is. Yes, they suck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> TSA, nah, they slipped up. They still slip up. I was in Atlanta recently. I ended up being sectioned off uh -huh. with like 10 other people who had a flight before I did, but I pretended like my flight was soon too, because it's like, yeah. we really were not moving for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. About to go through security. And then they're like, oh, sorry guys. Uh, okay, just flow into this line. That was chaotic in and of itself. It's like, mm. you, sorry, you cannot slip up. Yeah. Because you did once, and that was, mm, yeah, we all know what happened. The anniversary is coming up, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah you kind of, uh, I don't know. So we could, uh, I mean, September 11th is a big subject for a lot of people, but yeah. if you guys want, feel free to talk about it or incorporate it if you think it applies. Um, no, I was just saying, TSA sucks. No, 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 I'm just like opening it up because, well, we're going to look at propaganda in a second, right? But like September 11th, terrorist attacks happen, and so Osama bin Laden, he's in Afghanistan. We know this. We're going to go get him. Afghanistan has supported him. Uh, while we're fighting that war in Afghanistan, <laughs> Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. We know this. We're going there. Oh, no, they don't. No, they They've don't. never had it. But that's OK, because what Iraq really needs is a regime change. But we were always in um, Iraq. I, that, so, I mean, the, the way we are told things and then untold things. Well, you had a GIF that said what those who control the present yeah. control the past and mm -hmm. those who control what? The past control the future, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, an example of that is revisionist history. That's mm -hmm. happening in some states. Some Joseph states. Stalin, godfather of Photoshop. Because <laughs> as he would purge his inner yeah. circle, he would have them removed yes. from the photos. Yes, he would. Yeah, he would. It's crazy. Yeah. But as much as right now we're upset about TSA mm -hmm. and going through all of that and this, all the facial recognition software and all of those things, it's to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. And if all of a sudden we quit doing it and then there's an incident, mm -hmm. then... Mm -hmm. I mean, so, and there's that famous Ben Franklin quote. I mm. think it's a, a, somewhere at the beginning of one of the movies. I think it was the 1956 version. I okay. Watched. And it said something about if you're uh, going to give up your freedom for security, then you have, uh, you lose freedom. I, I don't okay. know the exact quote. But it's the whole idea is that, you know, we want, to we want them to keep us safe, and yet we don't like the way they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of quotable states people, um, <laughs> Natalie Portman's Senator Amidala says in Revenge of the Sith, so this is how democracy dies yeah. with a round of applause. Oh, yeah. The idea is that when people give up their freedoms, right, like the government doesn't take it, we ask them to take it from us, right, for the sake of safety. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that I think this movie like misses and why it's probably really hard for people to connect with it now sure. is like this is a purely this one's like a purely um, um, freedom for safety argument mm -hmm. where a lot of what we deal with now is privacy for conveniences mm -hmm. right like they don't these people are not happy like no matter what but like we we deal with the whole how much do we want Jeff Bezos you know, and Mark Zuckerberg to know about us personally, mm -hmm. like like the stuff that we think about at two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Because we type it in to mm -hmm. the freaking search engines in there. 
and their social media platforms at night. Like, like they yeah. know our deepest, darkest secrets because we tell them. Mm -hmm. But inversely, we get free shipping on everything <laughs> we want. We, you know what I mean? Like that's, well, I think it goes. You're right. We don't just tell them. Like, think about Facebook and Twitter. Like well, we were saying yeah, before, we tell everybody means. everything. Our lives are on display. The world is the panopticon. It's a prison where the prisoners just watch each other. Uh, like Guardians of the Galaxy is an exi the prison they're in in that is a panopticon mm -hmm. where the guards are in that central column yeah. and everything else is around it. Uh, we're, we are the watchers. We're watching each other. We're telling people, this is what I'm having for dinner. This is what my bowel movement looks like. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, there's always like, I mean, if you really want like that 100%, like you can get a VPN. Mm. <laughs> but you got to pay for it. Yes, yes, yes. pay for it. There are, there are like... Freedom at a cost. There are secure, but, but there are they secure know what you're engines. searching. Mm -hmm. The yeah. VPN people will yeah. keep it. The appeal, no, but you're not wrong, right? You're not wrong, there's things you can do. No, but there's also, there are free, like, not, like, 100%, like, secure search engines mm -hmm. that you can, like, uh, but they are. Puffin is one. But if, if one Puffin's in 10,000 people go yeah, out of their way to protect not themselves, not now you've stood gonna, out for like, trying yeah. to right. protect your privacy. Obviously, right. most, because it's more convenient to just do the internet. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is not something new, surveillance, um, and to, remind you of that, who's seen the movie Seven? Mm. How do they catch him? How do they find out where he lives? Does anyone remember? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, library. They, yeah. They, they see what he's been checking out of the library. Yeah. The, they've always, right, been keeping records like this. Um, now they're just, you know, public. now we all know about it. So and let we me prided ourselves on that mm -hmm. the idea of the public of the quote unquote public record. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. That's always it's public. It's a matter of public, public record. record. You go to that city hall and see it. Yeah. Yeah. So and now all of a sudden it's like whoa, my records are public. Damn. Uh huh. <laughs> or yeah. <laughs> I'll throw this out there to consider. There is a school of thought that there's nothing wrong with being watched because it's for your protection. You got nothing to worry about as long as you're not doing something wrong. That's if you're worried. Means you're doing something wrong. That's honestly how I feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if everybody is doing something wrong or feels that way, that should tell us something about uh, the society that we're in or the culture that we've become well, a part of. Well, it's like I mean, everybody know like okay, not no, not to put you out there, sir. <laughs> right? I have an idea of what you look like naked. You don't want me to see what you look like naked, but. It just became a PG-13 <laughs> film discussion. No, no, I'm just saying, like, if I guess, anatomically, what you got, it's true. If we're going to picture anyone naked, well, I'd appreciate it if it's me. <laughs> just okay, you. okay. You, That's, I, okay. You're the <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, it's, right. you, you grow from the time you're seven or whatever, you, like, boys are built this way, girls mm -hmm. are built this way. But still, for some reason, we all, we wear clothes. It's not just, not just because of the elements, but because of a, you mm -hmm. know, a moral shame, you know, whatever well, you want to call it. for your sake. <laughs> <laughs> right, whatever you want to call it. But, well, you but, understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, it's privacy, it's protection. And the scene where they get caught, they are not a no, stitch of clothes yeah. on, right? And that's saying something, right? Just how vulnerable we are, just how inescapable this really is. Other thoughts before we switch to propaganda and the death of language? Um, Ooh, death of language. Mm -hmm. if, if we're a going mess. to imagine anyone naked, it is a mess. It's Sunday. Um, <laughs> Sunday is and I'm always not even naked. An English major exactly. Like, okay? She knows something we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm yeah, a major of A language, period. It's a mess. Are you okay? Uh, All right. So, so, let's take a look at. I believe we got this clip and one more after this. Um, let's take a look at this. Let's see how the people at the top of society live in this world. And let's um, hear what he has to say. And I did it again. Nope. Nope. Told you There's to usually a, um, a play button. You can't hit it in the corner. I don't see it. I see it there. Let's try again. Present. Is that embedded or is it streaming? No, it should be embedded. I uploaded it to Drive. Oh, well, because like oh, unless uh, the, the internet's is out here, I think so. the internet is out. Yeah, yeah, he no longer streaming on Facebook. Yeah, we're not streaming. Uh -oh. Big Brother caught on. Mm. To us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, in that regard. This means something. <laughs> 
Well, in that regard, we got an hour and nobody's watching. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> We're still recording. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Pay no attention to. So here's my graphic novel. Dina, are you alive back there? If you want, we can tether. Uh -oh, the are we good? The back. thought police got her. Uh, She's been extracted. I, I can't hear you. I can't show the slides, Story is what I'm trying to tell you. You can tether off, uh, like... I could. I could turn on my hotspot. Yeah. You heard Dorian's coming. Is that what's happening here? I mean, is it just the video slides? Because we could just... No, it's any of the slides. Yeah, because you're on a train. Oh, you can play that. Uh, all right, I mean, I don't need the slides Let's to talk. It's just, dinosaur like, game. different visible. <laughs> no, we can't play the dinosaur game, because then I feel like I'm wasting everybody's time. No one all wants right, to just exactly. watch that. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, Why is there Minecraft on your computer? It's not Minecraft. It's oh, that actually it is. I don't know. It's not my computer. It's LMC's yeah. computer. I thought you meant this box, and I was like, I don't know what this is. No. Um, no, they recorded a, a show. Okay. Yeah. Things happen. <laughs> Technology is imperfect. It, it's okay. Um, if the internet comes back, I guess somebody let me know. So, um, in that scene that I was going to show you, we see the upper party members being able to turn off right, the screens, and Winston's very shocked by that. Um, he explains how the rebellion works, right? that it's not like an army or whatever, it's random individual people who have these bad thoughts, right? and that's really what they're trying to hunt out and sniff out. Um, Cut to him giving Winston the 11th edition of the Newspeak Dictionary, right? Um, and there, because Winston's news has been very good, there's been almost no extraneous words but a couple. And that's because he hasn't seen the new version that's not out yet, right? But the inner party members have it. So he gives it to him. Winston's flipping through. He finds that in, within that, there's that secret book written, written by Gladstone. And uh, that Goldstein, thank you. Um, I knew, I was like, it's not O'Brien this time. OK, mm -hmm. that was close. Um, and then it cuts to another two minutes of hate. We see uh, an execution. So propaganda is a powerful thing. Orwell did work as a propagandist. Like I said, I think this is him trying to atone for that, or at least tell people what he sees is happening. Um, how is our own language changing? All right, because the language in 1984 goes from, it gets consolidated. All right? There's no wonderful, stupendous, amazing. All right? It's good. It's good. Or more good? No, it's plus good. Double plus good. All right? And it be, it's, it's advertised as, right, this will make communication efficient. But what it really do, is doing is eliminating uh, it's thoughts. It's dumbing it down. And people can, can't think words that they don't know. Um, so how do we see that in our world? Do we? Is it, is it possible? Yeah, what do you think? A, a few ways, but the first one that came to mind was texting and mm -hmm. all the abbreviations and the little emojis and things like that that we use instead of speech. Mm -hmm. And that when you say LOL to somebody in a different generation, they still don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. and so it's a, it's a, it has changed the language. I have a, an aunt who thought it meant lots of love. Nah. So she's like, texted me, so-and-so died, LOL. No, it's not, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Uh, yeah, you're, but that's true, right? Like, um, the, I don't know if it's leet speak, if we would call it leet speak, right? But there was a period in the early 2000s that somebody tried to call it that um, with threes instead of e's. Um, a lot of it had to do with uh, teens talking to each other, not wanting mom or dad to know, right? Like, oh, can't talk now and stuff. Like, but also, it's a more efficient, faster way to communicate ideas, as someone might argue. Yeah. Well, but it's also about like group identity. Mm -hmm. If you had the eleventh edition, mm -hmm. then you can I, you know how to identify people who are in the party at the same level as you. Just sort of like how the subcultures of lead speak or. Mm uses of emoticons and all that is to identify a group of people that you identify with. OK. Yeah, no, that's a really cool idea, right? Like, there's a level of like elitism that's going with this, right? Being a part of something. OK, other thoughts? I don't know, kind of drag it backwards and call it neo-hieroglyphs instead You of could, you yeah. could, because yeah. we're, we're headed back to pictures, yeah. right? Emojis. Uh, picture communications. I have a niece who sends messages, full emoji, no words. 
<laughs> and you're, that's the fun of being like, all right, what is she saying? Okay, mm -hmm. the dog is on fire, got it. <laughs> yes? And we have politically correct and incorrect speech. Mm -hmm. Can you so, think of an example? <laughs> I'm thinking a lot of it. I'd rather not. I can think <laughs> of one. I'll, I'll get myself into trouble if I use it incorrectly. How about... He has an example. War is a military <laughs> engagement. Like a carousel of so euphemism. Is the changing of life. Life. <laughs> Is the changing of the word war becomes military <laughs> engagement. You have an example you yeah, want to share? I, um, mm -hmm. I do work for a certain retailer. Okay. Um, and uh, that retailer, they deal in mostly uh, office and school supplies. You mm -hmm. can um, <laughs> do what you will with that information. Mm -hmm. um, so around this time, it's really busy because this, mm -hmm. the kids are going back. And um, so parents have been asking for what's been called multicultural crayons. What? Mm. <laughs> 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 multicultural crayons is a good band name. Right. I like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, what, so that, like coloring skin color? Yes. Like coloring they, right. Right. So, they, so these things used to be called flesh tone back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now, multicultural. now apparently that's no good. PC. Mm. Wow. Mm. Quote unquote. Multicultural. <laughs> Okay. Right, and you could you could make the argument that like the a lot uh, an aspect of the PC movement is kind of like getting rid of words, right? Like limiting what we say, how we say it, and the how ideas. To make a buck. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. Because that I mean, what is that other than? Because the other because here's the other thing too. No one's ever asked for flesh tone crayons before. Yeah. But now all of a sudden they've been rebranded. And now they're an item that's being sought after. Like, when was the last time, like, you guys are parents. When was the last time your kids came to you and said, I need to get crayons that reflect the multiple skin tones of the people? <laughs> like, no matter what it is they're called. Nobody. But now Nobody. they got a new name, and they're in vogue, baby. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, no, that's a great point. <laughs> um, yeah. What else? Like, victims? <laughs> Collateral damage. I can't, I can't wait for pasty white. It's okay. Pasty white. Pasty white. Uh, Crackers anything <laughs> else? <laughs> language. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you this then. Right. Um, the death Tickle of language pink. is the death of ideas. The the control of language is the control of ideas. The control of thoughts. Um, are we? Do we see that? Uh, are by these movements, whether it's the abbreviations or uh, the the PC language or emo the use of emojis, is this changing the way we think about things? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm coming back in with. I don't know if you lump it in with PC speech, but um, there's the whole pronoun thing. Okay. Like you know, what what is your pronoun? I identify as we and us. Okay. But I, I do uh, PDs, and that's all they want to know. They don't want you to write your name on the, the name tag. They just would like the, the preferred pronouns. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I it's have, almost that's become, that's supplanted your identity well, I have now, a friend right? who went around with the name tags, mm -hmm. and she passed them out to people because mm -hmm. she wanted everyone to know how to refer to each other. I'm like, can't we just talk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I guess not. Yeah, and like again, it's like for protection, right? But I would say that you know, someone who's you make a mistake, someone corrects you, or you ask, you know. Um, and there's things we can do without someone else doing it for us, right? Without this restriction being put in place, um, and that doesn't take away from people being able to identify however they want. But that's now got the spotlight on it. And, and it, I, makes, it makes you very uncomfortable sometimes and you, because you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to hurt someone's mm -hmm. feelings, but you want to have a conversation. So mm -hmm. I just apologize a lot. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Other thoughts? Sorry about that. Oh, the internet came back. Thanks, Stefan. Yay. Yay. Oh, hotspot. So. <laughs> nice. OK. I think the internet. Uh, Language is important to freedom. All right, anything else we want to talk about propaganda or whatever? I, I mean, I know this, this might be a little off topic. 
uh, seeing the clips of this movie again, yeah. I couldn't help but think of the uh, the trailers and the footage from that new Joker movie with okay. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. Because I, I, at least like with all the press coverage and stuff like that, with the things that they're talking and mm -hmm. saying about that movie, it's a lot of class... Yeah. Warfare, sort of, you know, uh, marginalized, at least people who feel that they're marginalized. It seems that way, right? It seems like they're extent. like almost like an Occupy Wall Street yeah, kind of thing going through yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So, I, I'd be interested to see it because um, I, I don't think, is it out yet, right? No, no it hasn't. October, okay. Like another month or so. Yeah, they premiered it in yeah. Paris or yeah, somewhere? Yeah. Cannes. Cannes. Can. 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 Yeah. I've never we'll been. <laughs> I can't. Can. Um, Cans for the non French speakers. Yeah. History is cyclical. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the, I think the image is becoming increasingly powerful in our society, like with the rise of Instagram. So mm. Like Facebook, it was like words, people making like, I don't know, comments and statements. And then it was sort of surpassed really by like Instagram. It's all about like the image. And you think about how increasingly powerful the image is, like that red hat with like what four words on it, mm -hmm. basically like one in election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and sure. and then reducing it again, like the LOL, like reducing it to four letters. And eight years before that, there all was that uses there was Twitter. right, right, exactly. Yeah. It's all abbreviated. And eight years before that, it was this beautiful like poster image, mm -hmm. also like hope. Mm -hmm. And the artist who did that, and like those are images that won elections. Yeah. I think that the image is just growing. No, you're right. And both of them are using actually similar like propaganda techniques, right? Uh, the appeal to authority and the, the glittering generalities, uh, right? Like the idea that this country is no longer great, but following this choice, it can be, yeah. right? Uh, the idea that this country is no longer great, but by following this choice, there's hope. For the country in the future, right? Like you have to trust these two people out of billions of people in this country are the best because we say so. Because they we'll go here and then there because they say so. I mean, here and there, their were, wallets say so. I don't know if you were going to mention another book that Maybe. basically ties into 1984 and how I mentioned Twitter earlier and even just simply a screen in a room like say a movie theater or something was amusing ourselves to death public discourse in the age of show business which was by Neil Postman okay uh, if you haven't read it I think it's mind-blowing sure it was written in 1985 I guess just when mm -hmm. you know technology was on its way to just basically, you know. We're well, um, starting to see the personal further. computer and, come into the home yeah. around then, yeah. So I think that's a pretty interesting book to tie into this and how I think really he's trying to draw attention to how it's just the form of the message that can change. So how, you know, you're talking, you both mentioned abbreviations. Mm. Uh, you know, slogans on hats, and I mean, even here you see wars, peace, freedom of slavery, and ignorance of strength. That's, yeah, just tying into all of that, I think that's just a great, uh, I guess, form of media to point out. Yeah. To tie into 1984, so. Yeah. All right, very cool. Go ahead. And then the propaganda, we're getting ready to start a whole other election cycle. Start all over again. And, you know, the uh, different political, um, Conventions are like the Nuremberg rallies, mm -hmm. as in if you look at yeah. you know, the rallies that they had in this movie, very much, you know, with that big screen yeah. in the middle and the music and all the crowds and, mm -hmm. yeah. These are our people. That's a, that's a really good uh, metaphor. Uh, I like to think of it as um, <coughs> sports team mentality. Mm -hmm. Right? My team's better than your team. My team can beat your team. My team's the greatest. Right? Your team hasn't won a Super Bowl ever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. My, this is the year. Those were building years. This What's is the year. What's your guy done? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, there was another hand. Yeah. Um, I just also find it funny that the um, like Apple had their you know 1984 commercial yeah. when they start. <laughs> yeah, with the, and they break the screen. Yeah, they yeah. Break the screen and stuff like that. And at like flat, fast forward now, it's just like they're everywhere and they're basically their own cult with their own followers that are just like buy anything that they give them. I mean, it's like whatever, they have a new product, slightly different than the last one. 
Must line be. out the door. It's just like it's like <laughs> Disney makes. Star Wars movies, anti-establishment, right? Like rebellion. I'm like, Disney, you are the establishment. You don't know what you're doing. You can't make a Star Wars movie. Yes, sir. So I wanted to see the during the reveal, but then I forgot what it was. So in the book Thunderhead, which is the sequel to Scythe, okay. um, one of the things that said in the book is how the Thunderhead has cameras literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. But, and it's an AI, but... It uses, it, but it's programs that can't, that does its best for humanity. Okay. Basically. And so how there's still people who don't like the Thunderhead. And, and at one point, one of the characters says how in the early days, uh, when the Thunderhead was first created, mm -hmm. it was, people were afraid of it because that, because they were afraid of like the unknown. This, all the surveillance. Yeah, and change is hard, you yeah. know, no matter what. Okay. Yeah. Um, is anybody familiar with Batman comics? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Batman at one point... No, 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 not far back at all. <laughs> <laughs> not far back at all. I'd say, like, post-2000. Um, so, anyway, Batman uh, builds a, a network of satellite surveillance called Brother Eye, right, to, to keep tabs on superheroes because we're entering like this dark age of comics where superheroes need to fight each other mm -hmm. which we've been living in that age now for a while Never. right but like again of course the the satellite decides it knows what's best it tries to kill everybody take over the world right Ultron in the Avengers movies similar concept right with good intentions it's the Frankenstein story all over again Skynet, Skynet. That's, that's the hot spot that you're connected to it's called Ultron Ultron we are connected to Ultron right now so Ultron has done some good very nice. Okay. Um, anything else? I mean, you have right on the top right corner, there's control of language equal control of thought. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we not use words to think? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, see, that's, I, I wonder that all the time, right? Because I got to think that something exists pre-us pre learning language, right? We've got thoughts before that, but I, 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 that's as far, I can't figure it out. You know, it's like babies must... There must be something going on in there. It can't just be like, wow, I'm hungry. They have to like, oh, there's pain. I feel that. I'm going to make a noise, with, even though there are no words to do it. But yeah, we are taught a system of symbols, because that's all language is, and, and numbers, right? It's a system of symbols strung together to make other symbols to represent ideas. Yeah. Uh, never mind. OK. Yes, sir. <laughs> At the same time, yeah. if you cannot communicate with someone else, mm -hmm you cannot grow those ideas. There is no collaboration. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it ends up being a case of like trying to talk to a person with dementia. Sure. So you, you say something, and you're waiting for the words to click mm -hmm. back. But there's no building of ideas or consensus or anything yeah. like that without the language. Sure. Yeah, language is, is how we convey thought from, mm -hmm. from one there another. You go. So that's like, so it's Why not we so don't much. Have to hit each other with bricks. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's like if we, you know, like if if we evolve to the point where we could transmit thought telepathically. We'll get there, yeah. Like, I think so. What, you know, what we consider language would no longer exist. It would then be something else. Right. And ultimately, the powers that be would then find another way to circumvent that. Yeah, right? you'll have commercials just, beamed right into your dreams at night or goes. something. So it's just, you know, we wouldn't call it language per se. We'd call it telepathy. Yeah. But then there would be tele-commercials, mm -hmm. whatever the hell you want to call it, or, you know, <laughs> tele-blocking or okay. psychic That may training. exist already as fantasies, but never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> I will go here and then there. Um, I, I think it kind of plays back with what we were talking about with the politically correct and incorrect sure. uh, language. Um, whether or not you uh, like choose to go with uh, like either one, it's stopping you for a second, and you're thinking about what you're saying at that point. Mm -hmm. And now it's like they've, you know, if they like the Big Brother kind of thing wants to change something in the language, like. Yeah, it conveys the thought, but at the same time, the language can go reverse and make you think something else mm. based on what you're saying or what you're not saying or how you're how someone else is saying something. And at that point, it's just kind of falling in line with whatever is 
kind of dictated what should be, what shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I shoulds are scary, right? Because it tells mm -hmm. you there's a way something needs to be, right? Uh, and there's a lot of pressure that goes with that. <coughs> Go ahead. Also, with the like babies and how they think, when we are, when sometimes. Uh, when you're saying something, you don't know what to say because no words exist for what you need to say mm -hmm. or what you're trying to say. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's also like that language and can limit us. But do you think that's because they took those words away from us, maybe? And we maybe. just have forgotten? When you have that moment where you're like, oh, I just don't have the words to even explain. Yeah. Where, what happened to those words? Where did they go? I don't know. Uh, anything else? Uh, we come up with stories about this, right, in our own traditions. Uh, Judeo-Christianity, right, uh, the Tower of Babel. By, being able, by everyone being able to communicate, right, no, humanity's going to accomplish too much, got too big for their britches. We got to make it so they can't talk to each other. Uh, we create these different languages. Um, I don't know. We're seeing uh, Spanglish, right? We're seeing languages merge. At the same time, new languages emerge. Uh, it's a fluid thing. And I don't know if we're going to end up with new speak or not, but it's possible. LOL. Not really likely, because yeah. you don't have Esperanto. Uh -huh. But you do have Yiddish. <laughs> it's true. And we've got dead languages, like Latin, right? Go ahead. Um, it's funny that you brought up the Tower of Babel, because uh -huh. personally, as a not so religious person, okay. when I watch a lot of this and I see like the constant image of the guy's face everywhere you go, yeah, like it's just it it for me it, it's kind of like what if like what if God was just here all the time, uh huh, and like like the concept of heaven was there and like you had to go through all these things to get there, mm -hmm. but he was constantly telling you what you had to do to get in, okay, and like a lot of like what a lot of the power of religion is that unknown where it's like. Like, yeah, you have people telling you, yeah, you have to do X, Y, and Z, okay. right, in your life mm -hmm. to then, in this finite amount of time, to then be rewarded infinitely. But the, but the actual bouncer of the club never shows up. Mm -hmm. you're, you're just hearing mm -hmm. it from, his, from, his, from the guys that, that say that he, that he hired them. And in this regard, like, like, you, like you got the bouncer. Like, like he's, like, he's like, are you on the list? I don't think so. You can kind of get on the list if you snitch on your friends and tell me who's like mm. doing stuff that's bad. Mm -hmm. But like even still that might not get you there and that like that's like this everybody in society is living that way like although there's no free will in this movie well i mean but the what do they call them the proles the, proles, the yeah. low the low class right yeah a representative of a proletariat right um history is cyclical there are three levels to any society right the top the middle and the bottom the top wants the power the resources and they want to stay there the middle would like to switch you. places with the top. And the bottom wants the whole system gone. Mm -hmm. And often, revolution involves the middle using the frustration of the bottom to get rid of the top and create the same structure all over again. And George Orwell, again, in Animal Farm, he takes the word revolution, right, a change, and makes it mean a complete turn where you end up right where you started, right? A full revolution like your engine in a car turning over. Um, and there's something frightening about that. Because if I can figure that out, what if the people in power figured that out and said, well, then we just need to find a way to stay at the top. And the way we stay at the top is not waging war with other countries. It's waging war with the people of our countries and making them fight each other and be afraid of other countries. Right, um, it's possible, and that's godhood. And like, maybe that's that is actual like the like because if you could figure that out, yes, you're when gonna you, stay in power forever. You, when you put yourself at a point where you cannot be ripped down, mm -hmm. right? That's godhood. Sure. Everything, everything else is fluid. Like you can be a head of state, that can be taken from you. You can be the most powerful. You can be the CEO of the most powerful com company mm -hmm. in the world. That can be taken from you. But like the only thing that like. Can't, can't be ripped away from you is the idea of, of being a deity, right? And there are so few people who have reached that, mostly because they, like, they die and they're, 
legend sort of Luke sure, yeah. like, right like like Gandhi right like Gandhi mm. is 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 one of the few people who if you ask no one has a bad thing to say about him but I'm pretty sure there are some people there's some bodies buried somewhere but he got essentially two countries mm -hmm. to feel so polarizing you know in a way about him that like what do you, what can you do yeah you know what I mean so it's also interesting right because they're both Gandhi, Winston, Martin Luther King, right? Like, are people who are ahead of their time, right? They are anti-establishment. They are killed, and then they are propped up by that establishment and as, okay, as heroes. You know, right? he's regarded as, like, you know, the ultimate family man and stuff like that, but he had, unfortunately, a woman on the side, mm -hmm. and I'm sure she had a lot to say. Sure. But she will never get that out mm -hmm. because he... He put so much space between himself, who he was, and who she was, that he's yeah. not, he's not she she's less than a person mm -hmm. in that regard. Like, oh, you're just. And okay, but that's just, the like, other thing. That. Look how much we judge each other. You know what I mean, right? Like, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing, right? But the fact that like people bring that up, and like I got a message from the internet that Gandhi may have done inappropriate things to people, um, but. Does that take away from that other thing they were doing? You know, and like that's a conversation for another day. But consider that and consider how they in the scene they look at the, the proly and the woman Julia's comment is her hips are a, a meter wide, right? Or a meter around. She's commenting on her appearance while these two thin, I guess, relatively beautiful people, right, are are, are looking down at this person who's struggling through the grime, right? But happy. Um, that, right, like, is something, too, because what's wrong with that, right? But society has told us, no, you need to look a certain way. Something's wrong with this. Something's wrong with doing that. Something's wrong with having a mistress. You know what I mean? Like, you're not a good civil rights figure because you had a mistress. I don't see how they're connected, right? Like, but maybe. Uh, all right, I'm getting off my soapbox. <laughs> Let's talk about dystopia. Because dystopia is really popular these days. So here's the end of the movie, more or less. Uh, some, some that's not the end, but oh, I can't do this. OK. Yeah, no, that's not worth our time. <laughs> <coughs> we see Winston writing in the book, right? Um, then there was going to be a clip from Room 101 with the rats. And how, it's, how he just gives up Julia. And then I was going to show you the scene where he meets Julia in the cafe at the end. Uh, their exchange while Winston's confession is being played on the TVs. right? While he's been reported to be executed. We see him sitting there. We see him do the 2 plus 2 equals question mark. We hear him say, I love you. The book makes it seem like he's saying it to Big Brother. The movie, it's a little more open-ended, I would argue. That uh, When I watched it this time, I was like, oh, he's saying it to her, right? Or the idea of her that exists in his memory. Um, this book was written in 48. Multiple movies were made. It's 2019, and we're still talking about this. Is there hope at the end? Is this movie showing us a solution to the, the dangers of society and how they use technology? Is there any hope, or is this just the future that we can all just expect and we should head to the suicide booths? <laughs> what do you think? Happy ending? It's, it's so hard because we're so oh, yeah. past 1984 at this point. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, speaking of propaganda, <laughs> memes are, are modern propaganda or postmodern propaganda these days, right? Memes are super powerful um, and that's like one of the memes is like 1984 wasn't an instruction man manual right like are we past 1984 maybe chronologically but is this our world I don't know and it's like I'm not disagreeing I'm like I'm just trying to push us to think about it yes and no what do you think why or anybody I mean, to me, one of the weaknesses of 1984, things that didn't quite pan out, is that in order to sort of, 
convert the outlying part of the population yeah. in Winston. It actually, they had to resort to force. They had to strap a rat cage to his face to bring up his darkest memories from childhood. Yeah. Whereas now, that doesn't seem to be a realistic thing. Nobody's really afraid of the government battering down your door because of like your internet or like the memes you've been looking up on the internet. I had a student who told me that as well. They were like, Mister, they're not looking for me playing, pirating movies, I think is what mm -hmm. they said. Uh, they're looking for people like buying guns and plotting violence. Uh, and that brings us back to then like, why is that? Why are we so uncomfortable with the idea of surveillance? Well, we haven't had a, anybody try to run for president that was alive during the, like, the age of Facebook yet. Mm. Until, or until, until today, yeah. Recently. Well, yeah. they didn't grow up with it. So, it's, so one of the things that's really big in the news right now is these ring doorbells. Okay. Like, there's articles on them everywhere. Mm. Um, and essentially, it's you're putting a camera on the front of your house to protect your property, to protect your children, yeah. make sure that everything's safe. And that's great. Mm -hmm. um, say you don't have one, your neighbor across the street has one. I know as a high schooler a long time ago, it was a very fun thing to take, go to the 7-Eleven, buy a bunch of those firework little tank things, and jam eight of them into one tank and then set them off in the middle of the street. That was you, okay. It was <laughs> a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so like sometimes you'd say, somebody would yell, damn kids, and then we would scatter. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, um, that would be on tape on somebody's doorbell, would be submitted to the police. Mm -hmm. Oh darn, no more ring and run. No more ring and no. run? <laughs> What will children do in the evenings, in those <laughs> summer evenings? I mean, what could they, ch like... YouTube. No, like, I mean, I don't... To me, that footage only becomes a thing if somebody got hurt or some property got destroyed. Like, and well, that was a risk for office, though, and now it's a... Nah, now it's nah, up for nah, nah, come on, nah, nah, it depends on how petty... It becomes. Yeah, but 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 check this out. We, the oh, there, type are, of there are many that worse things. No these thing, that mm -hmm. get elected these days. Like if if the worst thing on your record that mm -hmm. somebody got you on film was a couple of illegal fireworks in the local town where you live, you know how you could flip that into like I'm just a homegrown kid and these were the values like that. That's nothing. Mm -hmm. That's so. Right, so what if it instead was somebody walking back from the pub? Um, and they're a little bit tipsy, and taken out of context, the stumble you make because of a, like an uneven piece of the street is captured on video. Oh, well, I and mean, it's spun as this is a person you're drunk. You, mm. is, you're drunk. <laughs> in the street. It becomes about what you experience, and like mm -hmm. you almost start surveilling yourself because right. you become like the ring doorbell. We're carrying our phones around us. We're installing the bells, and. You know, instead of having an adventure and making mistakes in life that may or may not hurt anyone or whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to edit yourself. So we may not have, like, valuable advances and discoveries because we're not allowing ourselves to make mistakes. We're Ooh, not that's allowing a good point. ourselves to, like, find the, the boundaries because we're afraid of, you know, getting in trouble or doing something wrong or, you know. Okay, yeah. What do you think? Um, I, it's also, like, it doesn't even have to be as big as like something that could be reported as a crime or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, me and my wife were, were looking into getting a house. Okay. And in terms of uh, when we're walking around, a lot of the times we've been told to limit how much we say mm -hmm. because nanny cams, the ring doorbell, mm -hmm. other things have picked up on people commenting on certain things and then the owners of the real estate people like using what people have said in the house to either bring up the price or get them to, to you know, to manipulate how the sale is going to go mm -hmm. in their favor. So I think it kind of plays into that a little bit too, just like it's not even the person that's on the other side mm -hmm. in front of the camera, it's the people behind it as well that can use it for, I think that's know. against the law to it's record someone uh, without their knowledge. Isn't I think, right? no, no, New York is a one, one party consent. It's one party knows. Yes. Yeah, so I'm filming you, I know. That's the one party. If they're not home, they're just really got the name. I don't know. I, I, it's, I'm not a lawyer. Do we have a lawyer watching on Facebook? That's what I'm saying. I think that's against the law. The ring doorbell has motion sensors, too. So you don't even have to ring the doorbell. You just walk in front of it, and it triggers, and it gets an alert to your phone. 
and people wow. can just watch live what's happening. Well, that's they. Yes, but then you know, and and well, they you're know. one of the parties. We, <laughs> one party. Yeah. You see, it's it's only while it's only recording that it must be illegal. <laughs> Jeez, guys, this is starting to sound like a dystopia. <laughs> really? <laughs> and maybe that's why we gravitate towards uh, dystopias, right? Uh, the Hunger Games and things like that. What do you thought? Well, like what I was gonna mm -hmm. say was also the um, in terms of the hope. It, I think it's it it's still gonna be. It's we're not there yet. It's not. It's still you know like malleable. We can. There is hope, but mm -hmm. at the same time, there isn't hope if we choose certain paths. And like the way that it's saying, it's like it's meant to be a warning. If you heed that warning, mm -hmm. then maybe there's hope. But if we just kind of continue to fall in line or like, you know, take whatever easy route there is and devote too much attention to our technology, then I think we're doomed. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, go ahead. Let me make it worse. Go make it worse. <laughs> so, I'm thinking about mental illnesses now. Yeah, no, 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 but let, <laughs> let me make it worse. Please. So wait a second. That means that if I buy a property across from a gun club mm -hmm. and I put a ring doorbell there, mm -hmm. then it's okay for me to surveil who goes in and out of the gun club? Correct, because it's considered public or like you're in public view. Oh, yeah. Oh, but really but the, the big difference is that 20 years ago, uh, a police officer would have to walk the beat. He would have to request footage. He'd have to go door to door to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And now a computer algorithm can scan through hundreds of thousands of hours over the course of a week and, like, and identify what it thinks are interesting. Mm. Wow. Also, with that ring technology, it has its own forums and stuff so Ugh. that they have their own like little community watch type things to, to go with it wow. and I feel like that yeah that's even scarier too because <laughs> then you get the mob mentality mm -hmm. well it's essentially a forum where people post pictures of somebody who doesn't look like them walking through the, yeah. their like suburb but that's always been community watch let's be real mm -hmm. it, but now sure. it's just like nosy people Come on wait, wait a second. You mean I can get a community together to stop people from emptying their ashtrays out in front of my house? Mm. <laughs> I like this idea. Among other things. <laughs> it does curb some behavior. Well, so does catching them. Well, well but there's so like, the doorbell. Like a fine it's easier for like having your like leaving your dogs like um, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. like on their on your lawn like you can yeah. you can find somebody like a lot of money for that like yeah. if somebody's been doing that. Well, well, the reason that angers so me so much. Yeah, is, yeah exactly. It's usually really hard to no catch them. No way to it. stop it. Yeah. I demand DNA <laughs> DNA tests for every dog license. <laughs> but see, that's like, but that's like, yeah. I mean, listen to the things that we're talking about mm -hmm. now, right? Like, that's what, that's civilization. The more comfortable you get, you got to find some things to, to get amped up about. And a lot art. of that is what it is. Like, I mean, these, like, again, like, this, none of this is fun, right? None of these people have any of the creature comforts that we have. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, they're dealing with fascist marching in the streets because they don't have 100,000 TV shows to watch. They don't have mm. peak TV. They don't have Twitter. They don't have Facebook. So, like, when they don't have the distractions we have, like, and they have those actual, like, 18th century, 19th century, or, you know, early 20th century mm -hmm. problems. Yeah. We don't have those problems, but we have similar distractions. Okay. You know what I mean? And so that's why it's like, okay, you know, social media is the thing that's keeping us. The ring doorbell mm -hmm. is our version of Big Brother. Mm -hmm. But, you know, back when you really thought that fascism was going to roll this way, it, it turned into something different. Mm -hmm. But when you really thought that that was the, the egg that that was gonna hatch into this grand brand of dictatorship, mm -hmm. you know, that's what their dystopia was. Ours is a little different, mm -hmm. but there's still parallels to it. Okay. You know, it's... Yeah, we're using our doorbells to spy on everybody now. Yeah, apparently. I had no idea about this thing. To what you said all right, we'll go across like that. Yeah, go ahead. We're all big brother now, so yeah. it's like... Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, um, freedom's great when it's your freedom, right? But when freedom involves somebody leaving flaming dog poop in a paper bag on your front porch, you don't want them to be able to do it. 
that's a statement. But, <laughs> but, by, but by putting something in place that punishes people for doing that, you are curbing their behavior. How could you are you? telling them that that is bad, right? When objectively for them, or subjectively for them, I'm sure it's good and it's a lot of fun, right? It's, it's subjectively bad for you to go through it. So at what point do we draw the line with freedom and say, well, this is OK, but this isn't, right? It's an almost impossible thing to do, right? Like the idea of the greater good, right? The idea of democracy, right? It's what benefits the most, right? What most people want. We'll go here and then there, yeah. And Everett, I skipped I, I had to go back to the Ben Franklin quote. I mean, they were worrying about this 250 or more years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I know. He never had an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay? He, he had an outhouse, and, and he, he had to, to cure his own bacon, yeah. and, and, and he had... He had no time on his hands. Nah, he sounds like an Android guy. Ben <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was instrumental in getting the American Revolution started not only stateside, right, but abroad in, in, in France, right? Um, Benjamin Franklin was not a regular person, right? He wasn't the low of society. He was the middle trying to get rid of the top. And once they did that, they created a new top, and he's on our money. Um, he is the top of our money. The top of our money. They, they've printed higher denominations, but that in circulation, yes, the 100 is the, is the biggest, yeah. Um, probably more important and more powerful than the president, than like George Washington like played a role, like not militarily, right, but in mm -hmm. winning the hearts and minds of people mm -hmm. to get them on board with us. It was the middle class. It was the aristocracy, right? The, the intellectuals. The intellectuals, yeah. yeah like <laughs> rallied the farmers, right? Same thing, French Revolution, right? All over again. And then we ended up with the reign of terror. And then they went back to a king. Um, it was like France. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know if there's any hope. <laughs> I think that talking about these things shows us that we still have some kind of freedom because no one came through the ceilings or windows to get us. <laughs> So we are not that far gone yet. We've got some time. You're right. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> also, I forget who said, but they said how during World War II, yeah, uh, fascism was the main thing that people were afraid of. Uh -huh. And I'm pretty sure that by the time 1984 was written, it was communism that people were afraid of, which is also shown in Ing Sok standing for English socialism and how that's the big, and how that's what they felt. Is that what it stands for? Yeah, yeah. it says it in the book. OK. Yeah. Good job. And like Two points in Eurasia, you. it's neo-socialism. Mm -hmm. Or, ne I mean, neo-Bolsheviks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So English socialism, neo-Bolsheviks. Bolsheviks were the workers. Bolshevik. So yeah, it's like the same. Were it's just different words for the Russian same thing. Revolution. Yeah, no, no, but yeah. like again, it was and the workers like, rising up and in socialism. East Asia was like something that translates into death self or something. Yeah. Or death individual or something so, like that. So I like that point because it does kind of highlight just how similar the ideologies were of these warring things, but they're given different names. Um, circling all the way back to TSA, Right. <laughs> There's another reason why traveling the world is so difficult now, right? Like because if you're able to travel the world and see these other people that you are told are the enemy or are so different from you or their way of life is just so and you go there and you see them and you interact with them and you realize that we're all just people, right? And we're all struggling through this life dealing with very similar things with cultures and ideologies that are almost identical. Right, and that right is something that isn't good for like maintaining control. If right, propaganda is something that's still happening. If we're being told that this is our enemy and they've always been our enemy, I mean, you can just look at the history of the United States relationship with Russia. All right, World War II, we're friends. World War II ends, they're the bad guys. 
then it's over in the 90s. You need a convenient target. Now they're bad again. It's the idea of the other. They're so different from us. They don't like money, right? They're communists. It's crazy there. Nobody has anything, and they're all married to pigs. Like, it's... <laughs> it's... Like, again, right? Like, it's an it's a oligarchy. Just like we have an oligarchy here, mm -hmm. right? It's a it's a powerful group yeah, that controls. And I'm not talking politicians. I'm talking corporations. You only hear the Google word and oligarch Facebook. in reference to Russia. It's a Russian oligarch. It's never like I've never heard of an oligarch. Oh really? There's I, so I only believe there's two types of government. There's republic, and oligarchy. An oligarchy is when a group of people control. Napoleon was not in control by himself. There was a group of people. Hitler was not a dictator, right? It was an oligarchy. It was, a, it was the party. It was the Nazi party in control. Uh, Stalin, it's an oligarchy. What we have with our president and their party and the cabinet, right? It's a group of powerful people controlling the country. Um, and that's not even talking about the lizard people, you know, so. <laughs> or the mole men. Or the mole men, right? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there are definitely people out there that think that there are people who ascribe to uh, the counter set of beliefs than their own, and that those people might secretly be lizard people, right? And like that's that's crazy. Like a lizard man. <laughs> Unless they're really lizard people. So because Trump is sweet on Russia, okay, we need to pick the fight with China. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if he's going to be sweet on them, I need a new other. Mm -hmm. So God only knows in the next month or so when they both decide that, you know, running both countries off the cliff is a bad idea, <laughs> then, then somebody else has got to be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. But I still don't understand how North Korea can be a good guy mm -hmm. to the president. Read his letters; they're very nice. Uh, actually, <laughs> oh, they're so sweet North on Korea each other. supported President Trump in the 2016 election. Okay. So that's how it can be good. Yeah, to but the I president. need I need an other for that one. But then it's Rodney South. Korea. <laughs> mm. No, no. Well, you know. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. Our enemies right. become our allies, become our enemies, also, right? Like we never will Russia. conquer Russia. Russia will never conquer us because that's not how the game is set up. No. Nope. Right? Like it's set up to have proxy battles, right? To have wars that burn off a surplus, all right? So you can create scarcity, so you can make people desperate, maybe. There's plenty of hope, OK? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the hope lies in, in the masses, right? You need to remember that this is ants versus grasshoppers, that the people in power are greatly outnumbered by the rest of the people. And that if people can get past all the BS around difference, right, and focus on commonality yeah. and communicate and work together, was no one could stop us. So I'll be on the corner um, <laughs> handing out batons. <laughs> I didn't want to say guns. I feel like that's a hot topic. So I'll be handing out batons. And so there's hope there. There's oh, yeah. hope that <laughs> there's hope in maybe the power of love at the end with Winston and Julia, right? That maybe that like that feeling of love gets you through all the terrible stuff. That you need someone to you know share your internet history with apparently <laughs> for something, and you can't do it alone. So we got to do it man, together. Passcodes. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. When you no passcodes. No passcodes. No passcodes. <laughs> I think other, instead of That's other uh, Area 51. Area 51. <laughs> Did we talk about Area 51 <laughs> once a class? OK. OK. Um, yeah. No, we won't talk about it next class. Because of the Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's approaching. It's approaching. How soon? Chicken sandwich. The 20th. I'm ready. I'm, I, I got my ammo. I got my body armor. But the, well, to, to jump off of that, right, the idea around the, like, let's storm Area 51, they can't stop us all, is like what I'm saying, where it's ants versus grasshoppers, right? Like, if everybody were to do it in school, right? If all you students were going to decide you were going to do something and you actually did it, no one could stop you. There's, there's no room in detention for half of the school. There isn't. There isn't. And also, another thing that I saw was, 
Stor Storm Loch Ness Nessie can't hide from us all. Mm. And it was and it was September twenty first. <laughs> Area fifty one. We talked about Area fifty one with Independence Day. <laughs> Inside of Area fifty one is the toothpaste, the ten out of ten Dennis recommended. Ah, there we yeah. go. Um, I I'm pretty certain Obama told us that they built the stealth bomber in Area fifty one, and like that's what that was about. Uh, but maybe maybe that's just part of it. It's because they used alien technology. We have a space force coming. Living down there. Sure. To be fair, have you ever heard Obama speak? He sounds like he's being controlled by an alien. Uh, no, we do. We built the stealth bomber there. There's nothing there. I mean, yeah. Well, need external control. If something, there's something there's that's, that brings up another point. If uh, these figureheads, like, is Big Brother even real? Is are the people we think of as leaders of countries just mouthpieces for or something else? Right? Like that. It's possible. God, God I hope so. I mean, like again, uh, I was like, whatever. I mean, let's <laughs> not go into it. At the very, the very first, it will go clip, downhill very quickly. In the go very ahead. first clip we watched, I think it was the two minutes of hate. Mm -hmm. We see Goldstein say, but we see Goldstein, and you can barely hear him saying, "Big Brother isn't real." Yeah, that's what and, he's saying. And but you can you can't hear it because of all the yelling, mm -hmm. and you have to really listen to it to be able to pick that up. Twitter. Yeah, I had the, the <laughs> subtitles on, and the subtitles were following what he was saying, but uh -huh. all the noise was uh -huh. like making it really hard to hear what he's saying. No, you're right. I watched it with the subtitles on as well, and it was it was helpful. Which I find interesting, because it's it, even the movie itself is kind of washing out what he's trying to say. Uh -huh. It's just like, no, you can't hear that. Listen to these people like yelling. Uh -huh. Yeah. Goldstein, uh, Big Brother isn't even real. Hmm. Okay. What's up? You guys had English subtitles? I had Korean. Nice. <laughs> well, the government knows that now. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, last thoughts. We've got uh, a few minutes left. Does anybody want to say anything about anything? In conclusions, final thoughts. Questions, ideas, interesting parodies. Parodies? I don't know. I don't know. They, the group there Down was. Down with Apple. 